Hello students, in this video we are going to see the last part of caring for our air. Okay, and the main important points once again for you to remember, for you to store it in your memory so that you are able to crack the MCQs without any problem. The first one is the Thaj Trapezium Zone. They would ask you, what does this TTZ stand for? Okay, you should be able to identify what is it correctly. It is not triangle, but it's a trapezium. Trapezium shape is different from a triangle. Again, you can watch my videos to get the shape of this. Okay, and this is around the Taj Mahal. There's about 10,400 square kilometers above or around the Taj Mahal. That area in the shape of a trapezium is called the Taj Trapezium Zone. And what does it have? It has 40 protected monuments, including three World Heritage Sites. What are those three? Definitely, undoubtedly, one of them is the Taj Mahal. Then you have the Agra Fort and Fatehpur Sikri. Next, what is the culprit here? Who is the culprit? It's the Mathura Oil Refinery. For years together, nobody noticed. Okay, Taj Mahal is made of limestone, calcium carbonate. And here is something, this oil refinery was giving out sulfur dioxide emissions. And that was so high that it went and attacked the marble of the Taj Mahal. That is how it got affected. And then, so what has what is this TTZ about? What are they doing? They are relocating all the industries. There are about 512 are little more or less about that, around 500 industries in this area. What are they doing? They don't want any of these industries to be near the Taj Mahal. So there is relocation. And not only relocating or moving it out, in that place they are building up a green belt. What do you mean by green belt? Growing of trees, okay? Afforestation is happening. And also if there are smaller industries there, they have to reduce their emissions. So these are the three things that comes under the TTZ. Next we go to Delhi. Delhi ha was having a very high polluted air, highly polluted air. It was not at all good for anybody to breathe in. So that is when they there was an alarm that was raised up and they started implementing CNG buses. Today, they have the largest fleet of CNG buses. Of course, all other cities have followed. Now, we even we have green autos everywhere. So, they have buses, they have autos, even the private vehicles are run on CNG. They are non-polluting and they are cheap. Then we come to Euro norms. We have these Euro norms, Euro 1, 2, 3. No, this is only to set emission standards. You know, when you take an emission certificate once in six months, what do you see there? What is the percentage of gases that are emitted by your vehicle? And if it is going to emit something beyond the permissible, we have we cannot have this certificate at all. You will not get the clearance. Do you understand? So that emission standards are set by Euro norms. In India, it is replaced or renamed as Bharat norms. Okay, then we have the remote sensing satellites. These are very good tool. It's a very good tool because it gives you data covering any part of a remote area of the world, including the floor of the ocean. Now you should remember these satellites are sent into space. They are in the space, but they can even see the floor of the ocean, okay? Then they are very accurate. There is no mistake. Like manually, if you do, we can tend to make mistakes. But these satellites do not make mistakes. They are accurate. They are frequent, as frequent as possible. You can get the latest updated versions. Then it's very quick, okay? So th these are the things that make it a very good tool. Initial cost may be high, but then the labor cost, of, the labor cost, the manual labor, all that is reduced. Then what are the uses? especially weather forecast, it is very, very useful. If a flood is going to come, if a tsunami is going to hit, if there's going to be a drought, there is less rainfall, or if there's going to be a volcanic eruption, everything and anything is always given up by these remote sensing satellites, okay? So now we go on to the MCQs. to 
to the MCQs. The first one, TTZ. What does it stand for? Is it triangle? No. Is it the tallest Taj zone? No. So, Taj trapezium zone. Remember the word trapezium? Shape of the trapezium is that zone. So, it is Taj trapezium zone. The industry that agreed, see we saw about this Madhura oil refinery which gave so much of sulphur dioxide but they very beautifully agreed to bring down the sulphur dioxide emissions. So what is that? It is Madhura oil refinery. You should not forget. The virtue of providing consistent data. See now when we go to the remote sensing satellites, it has to be constant, isn't it? And it has to be steady. Like once it gives and once it doesn't give, then there is no point. So consistency is very important. And what is that property called? Is it homogeneity? Is it data coverage? Is it quickness? No. So consistency is called homogeneity. Okay. The TTZ, it includes three heritage sites. This, of course, we have to remember. We can't you know, understand and learn. What are the three? Is it Taj Mahal, Agra Fort and Akbar's tomb? Or is it Humayun's tomb and Qutub Minar? Or is it Agra Fort and Fatehpur Sikri? The third option is the right option. CNG stands for, what is a CNG? Is it clean nitrogen gas? Or is it carbon nitrogen gases? Or is it compressed natural gas? The answer is compressed natural gas. The fuel that is used by Delhi transport buses. Earlier it was petrol and diesel and other things. But now they have replaced it with what? Is it LPG? No. Is it biodiesel? We don't have oil seeds. So it is CNG. That's compressed natural gas. Remote sensing satellites are sent into... See, they may cover oceans and remote areas, but where are they sent? Where are they? They are found in the space. So, space is the correct answer. Remote sensing satellite is a good tool because why is it a good tool? It is very cheap and easy to build. Is it easy to construct or is to make or, you know, assemble a satellite? Or is, does it collect and send data very late? Or... It allows data collection in remote lands and oceans. Which of these three could be the correct option? The third one could be the correct option because this says it's very easy and cheap. No, initial cost is very high. This says that it will send the data very late. It sends immediately. So that's also wrong. So the last option is the correct option. Euro norms are norms of vehicular exhaust emissions for the whole world. European Vehicle Emission Standards for Exhaust Emissions. The, from the word Euro, you get the hint or you get the clue that the second option is only for the European Vehicle Emission Standards. Okay, Euro norms have greatly reduced. What have they reduced? The toxic effluents. Effluents, what are they? They are the liquid contaminants or liquid pollutants. Then you have toxic automobile emissions and soil contaminants. This is in the land. Which one is it dealing with? It will reduce the toxic automobile emissions. That is why these norms are set up. The gas that is not a greenhouse gas. What is a greenhouse gas? Something that is able to trap the heat that is called as a greenhouse gas and it will not allow the heat to go back again. If you see here, carbon dioxide is a very good greenhouse gas. Methane, yes, it is a greenhouse gas. But when you come to oxygen, it is not a greenhouse gas. It does not have the capacity to trap heat. So the answer for this question is oxygen is not a greenhouse gas. Okay, so I think you have enjoyed this MCQs and you can frame your own MCQs. If you like it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.